The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. This is the Tiger Technician's Hour. It's a little early today at 8 a.m. I'll be doing this again tomorrow, and uh, then we're back to normal. In the meantime, back at the ranch, what we're looking at is uh, the Dow futures are up 63. I was wondering how that happened because uh, Verizon and uh, Procter & Gamble have earnings out. I'm not sure if they are, but they certainly weren't doing it. But what was doing it, I guess, was Coca-Cola. Uh, Coca-Cola. I'm going to look at the... Let me just check here. Uh, okay. Hey, I don't have Cokas in the Dow anymore. I should know these like the back of my hand. What happened? Yeah, there it is. Coca-Cola in the Dow. I was going to say, did, did I get that confused? Yep, Coke is there. And Coke... Uh, so LMT, which is uh, Lockheed Martin... Came in with earnings. It's up 18 at 334. Uh, Coca-Cola came in with earnings, I guess, and it's up 1.45 at 48.85. Uh, that's Coca-Cola trading. Let's see if that's at 48. Oh, it's trying to fill that big gap. What a huge gap! On the 14th of February, sorry, 13th of February, closes at 49.79. The next day it opens at 46.70. Three points. So uh, it's trying to fill that gap. This is peak A, B, C, D. And this is E, yeah, leg E, uh, just gapped up. Okay, so we're going to be watching this one closely. In the meantime, back at the ranch, let's just go through the numbers now. The Dow uh, pre market uh, with an hour and 20 minutes to go. The Dow at close at 26,511. The uh, futures are up 76. So that's that's that foretells some some good opening action. We'll see what happens at about 1:30 today. That's going to be very important. Uh, we're looking at the S&P, and I'll just do this very quickly because I've already done it in the update. Underneath the high of three days ago, which was at 29.18 round number, it's trading right now 29.0790. So close at 29.07. Uh, nice move up in the futures. The futures up now four. In the e-mini, let's see where that gets to um, later in the day. Oh, UTX earnings as well today. I didn't realize that. UTX, very nice. It's acted extremely well. It's up 4.89. Well, there you are. So 141.80, not the all-time high. All-time high, 144.15. It's getting closer and closer. Oh, nice action. Uh, let's see what's happening at this time this afternoon at 12, uh, 10. So 10 minutes past 12 when this is rebroadcast, it was still holding up 4.89. I see no reason why it shouldn't be holding because uh, that is a very, it's not like it's just one point. This is now five points higher. Hey, that's a very good action. Let's see, just as a matter of curiosity, since I have Caterpillar in my Dow Quartet, Caterpillar, which is at 142.83, up 45 cents right now, pre-market, uh, Triple M. Triple M is trading up 34 cents at 218.88. Real nice rebound. Uh, IBM, IBM is trading up 12 cents at 139.01. It's the weaker of, of the of the four. Uh, IBM, Caterpillar, uh, Triple M, and, and uh, UTX. So this this will help the market down up 86 in the futures. Now this is going to be very important. Within the context of the Dow itself, you can see, based on my automated uh, Chapman Wave uh, resistance levels, that at IND right here, did I just hit something incorrectly? Yep, there it is. Uh, right here at 26,511. Look at all these resistance points. Right here, these are automatically generated. Uh, you've got 26, let me move this away, 26,646, 26,683. So as I said, the 26,600s, I was talking about this yesterday, has a lot of resistance. That's kind of what it's bumping into right now. 
if it breaks out, 26,918 is the next level of resistance. Um, then you get, to, well, 26,623 is also in the weekly. So I am looking at this and I'm saying, if the Dow is able today to power over the 26,600s, that is going to be very good action. At this particular point, I'm still considering that that is kind of a repellent area, but you've got some real good action and some good stocks in the Dow. So I'll be watching that. Now, I want you to do this uh, real quickly. Look at the high-grade copper. High-grade copper is trading at 2.902, unchanged right now. Not a very good pattern. Made this cup formation, and then it failed. Uh, FCX, and a lot of people will be asking me about FCX. It just keeps... So this is X is a steel. I meant to put FCX. Anyway, FCX is... Uh, trading at 13.68, it's up three cents, but it's made a peak F top at 14.50. Uh, no, uh, 14.68. At 14.68, pulls pulls back all the way to 13. Ooh, that was a big move percentage wise. 13.25 yesterday. Now it's trading up at 13.65, up three cents from the close. I'm watching this because the weekly chart. I mentioned this last week. It's still looking pretty good with these stair step moves with big pullbacks. Look at this. You get in, let's just say you got in at 10, the lowest in, in the high nines. So it spirals up to the 12, to the 1250 area, uh, 1265, pulls back all the way down to 10.20. Then it rallies all the way to 13.86. But wait a minute, it pulls back to 11.78. You've got to have some pretty wide stops if you're convinced that there's going to make a stair step move to the next move, which was um, at 14.68. Now it's pulling back to uh, 13.25. If this is just a minor pullback, because each one seems to be getting a little bit smaller, then you could have a stair step move that takes you to a new reco recovery high about 14.68 over the next week. Um, I, I don't know if it's going to happen, but uh, if it does, that'll be very good action, helping the weekly chart uh, maintain 85% stochastic and the MACD is very good. That will be very nice. And at this particular point, it says that between $13 and $12.62, there should be really good support in FCX. This is Freeport McMoran, McMoran um, Inc. Copper Company. Now, another thing I want to look at is I want to do wheat. Because wheat is up a dollar and a half finally. It's had some real tough days. It's trading at 4.37 and a quarter. Soybeans, that's soybeans. Uh, trading down a half at eight, 876 and a half, uh, struggling, trying to make a little doji candle reversal. We'll see if it can do that. And the B and the, sorry, corn. Corn, as they say here in the northeast, in Boston area, corn. Corn is trading leg after the weekly chart and just down a point at 353 and three quarters in a leg after the downside in the day. This is really all of, all three of the grains have to start a really good move, and that has to happen soon. And I'm not sure if the dollar is instrumental in this. They seem to be working kind of in different um, different tidal moves. So I'm going to be looking at this. Let's go back to the dollar here. The dollar is trading up seven cents. Yeah, this is nice action, holding steady. It needs to get to the 97.52 level very soon and then into the 97.72s. So that'll be a nice breakout to the upside. I'll be right back. And in the meantime, back at the ranch, the futures are down up 75 cents. The S&P futures up 3.75. Be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, we're back and the five minute E-mini has just made a leg D. Remember the chapter wave, we're always looking for four legs higher. And uh, this peak D right here is it something to watch. It's up uh, 3.75. And that's very interesting because on different days this week, we've seen that one of the indices is a little stronger than the other. We've also seen, look, this is going to be quite important. QQQ. Well, let's just do the IWM first because the IWM has been the weakest, still the weakest, made a PE in the Chapman wave. It couldn't make the left side, right side price time match in the cup formation to try to go to the 159.50 high of the 25th of February. Uh, pulled back to 148.41, ran up and then stalled in the 158 area, and now it's trading 155.23, uh, 155.48 early this morning, uh, up 25 cents. Now, what's going to be important about this, you can see the weekly chart, that descending triangle, expanding triangle, or wedge, keeps bumping to this resistance, and until it can start to trade in the 160 area, I think the IWM is... is going to remain, at least for now, is going to remain uh, the weak link. Most importantly, if you look at the XLK, look at this XLK. This is the S&P Tech Select ETF from Spider Fund. Made a leg D yesterday, right into the, uh, here we go, right into this up channel. It held the rising trend line very nicely. You've got um, how can I put this? See the little dojis? This is so interesting. When you look at many, many charts, and you look at a chart that's going up and it's having small little candles, little tiny, lots of doji candles, but it refuses to go down. What it says is, until I'm done with this move to the upside, don't play games, because I can keep doing this for a long time. However, when I run out of energy, I can fill three to five of these candles in one foul swoop. In other words, in leg D right now, the on balance volume to me is saying, this is the blue line right here, is saying that the XLK traded at 78 round number close yesterday. What was the high? I think that was almost the high. 7803 was the high. That leg B in the monthly, this huge move up is saying absolutely fantastic action, just consistent buying. As fund managers have said, this is the area to be. Remember when 
you saw, you, over the years, you've seen the IBB, the biotechs do the same thing, and money just kept coming. At certain point, the steels were doing their steel stocks. This has just been persistent buying. At some point, it doesn't mean to say that it's going to stop being a, a favorite area, but what it does say is that be careful because it could be one sudden bad news event that just allows the, a free fall as you've run out of buyers. And until you get those new buyers, the 76.48, 14 period moving average is going to be absolutely key support. I suspect at some point we're going to plunge and we're going to go down below it and then start a very choppy move and sort of struggle to make new highs until we have a decent consolidation for a, a peak B in the monthly, in the weekly chart, and then start up to go to a C and a D. So this is the favored area, XLK, but I think it's somewhat overbought at this particular point on a very short-term basis. That's not saying it can't go higher. It's saying that the technicals are very close to what could be some kind of a digestive phase, but at this point at 97.99, that's less than 2% off 100%. You never get 100% in the stochastic. This is one of the higher readings that I've seen in a long time, and it's been consistently. So I'm saying just one sudden fell swoop to the downside, but there's been persistent buying. This is a favorite area. Next thing I want to look at is if you want to go to something like um, HACK, H-A-C-K. HACK, this is your cybersecurity area, had a bit of a pullback, 41.45 was the high, the recent low back in the 31s in December, this is a spectacular move, <laughs> I'd say 10 to 11 points on the upside uh, in four, four months, it's less than four months is very, very good, and it broke to a new high, but here again, this could be just starting to chop around, sideways movement as it digests again. It doesn't have to break down, but a sideways movement. The next one I want to look at is, uh, and I always forget which one it is because it is in the, uh, let's see, you've got security, you've got tech, and you've got, I've got the image in my mind and exactly the chart formation. Um, I'll, I'll get it in a moment. It's the m missing link here. It's also one of those very quiet, under-the-radar um, ETFs that's made up of a particular sector. Why am I missing it? Oh, there it is. just came back to me, and it is in the... Did it start with a B? I'll get it. Don't worry. Um, meantime, when I, let me put that down as a question mark here, and that, I'll just put B with a, with a, with a, with a racket. To say, was it a B? Oh, man, I can just see it. Right, no, I'll be back. Meantime, let's look at this because I want to look at Raytheon. I don't know when they come out with earnings, but it's very interesting that the defense area, Raytheon's gone from the 229s back in April of last year to April of this year, no, to December. It goes to the one, uh, about 143, was that? Let me check, 144. 144.27 low, rallies up to the 188 area, now trading 182, gone sideways. And if you put it together with Lockheed Martin, LMT, which is up 17 points, um, also going from a, um, an all-time high back in February, I think it was, yeah, February, it is 363 round number high, I must put that in, 363, 363, R slash N, high, and that was in 2, 2018, there we go. And now what we're looking at is after going all the way down, there you are, to the 241 area. It was trading at a close yesterday of 315, and now it's trading at 332. <laughs> that is a huge move, up 5.5% for this defense stock. So they must be doing everything right because, let's face it, um, the defense area as a general rule, PPA is actually defense. It's also um, Invesco Aerospace and uh, defense area. That's done much better as an overall uh, index. And you're looking at a leg D at 60.32, close yesterday in the left side, right side price time match of the uh, daily. It did that already, but the weekly chart is extended. You had to make a moving target of the plumb line. And that says that the high that was made back in October of last year of 62.18, hmm. That's very close. Let's see if it gets there. And that's Invesco Aerospace and Defense. 
So that's a bigger conglomerate. I'd like to look at Boeing for the moment. Boeing right now is up $1.53 at 376.60, also helping the Dow. But really, this is more an arch formation that becomes a lowercase h to m. So let me show you what I'm talking about. There's your h, your first h. Now it's trying for the second h right there. And it's just stuck in a sideways. I don't think Boeing's done. I think there's a lot of work to be uh, done on the upside. So, sorry. Let me put it this way. I think that there's a lot of bad news still to come out. Boeing's earnings come out. Yes, is that it? Within a week, it comes out pretty soon. So I'm going to be watching this closely. I would suggest to you that there's a lot of due diligence that needs to be demonstrated to the public before people feel very comfortable about Boeing again. It'll be right. I'm sure it'll come right. They've got the money to do it. But it's prestige that's been knocked for a loop here. I'll be back. The uh, futures are now Dow's up 68, S&P futures are only up 325. I'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So there might have been an 8.30 news report. I didn't get it, but there has been just a tiny bit of a pullback. Nothing much. Uh, this is what I wanted to show you. Look, SDT, which is the State Street Corporation, you know, they were involved in many of those original ETFs. I'm really watching the earnings today because if it's trading at 70, up 10 cents pre-market. It's had an all-time high of 114, 114.27 back in January of 2018. This, look, keep your eye on this chart. You see that? You see this chart here coming up? 
I won't tell you what it is until it's there. Also, January of 2018, 13,635. This is the New York Stock Exchange. It's had a, a very good run since the December slump where it went from 13,635 in January of 2018 to the December low of 10,723. Now it's at 12,940. It's still well under the all-time high. But look, also, you've got a lot of key stocks and indexes that at some point made the January of 2000 high and then never got back when the S&P and the Qs and all the others went to the all-time highs in 2018 later on. They never did that. So this is going to be very important. SMH has never did that until just recently. So how the rotation back up is, it comes is very important. So State Street, I'm saying they've had a lot of competition from what I've read uh, with all these new ETFs. There are just hundreds of ETFs. So I'm really watching this. How do they make out? This is a Boston company, State Street Call. Um, Q, 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 daily, weekly, monthly, 120 minutes. I'll show it. Question, will I show it? Yep. The Chapman Wave Notation. QQQ, it went to, uh, I didn't put that in, but I should have put that in yesterday, was a leg F to the upside, right? It might have recycled. I'm calling it F for now. Um, in the daily, after the doji candle of, uh, what are we two doing today? On oh, Friday. So this is very important. Leg C is still in, is active in the weekly chart, just to add it to that for this week. So this is still leg C. Monthly chart. I don't know whether I can call this an A or a G. Everything about it says it should be an A. But to be uh, um, to be faithful to the Chapman Wave methodology, the, it did not take on that big move down to the December low. The Investor Trust, QQQ Trust series, uh, the index 100 trading vehicle, it didn't even get close. The low was 94.84 that was made back in 2016 in the monthly chart. So this could be just a continuation in a G. And then there's going to be a whopper of a turn down. I don't think so. I think that we've still got to see a, some kind of slowdown of the Qs and the um, and the SMHs and the XLK as the the cyclicals and the the big industrials start to come on strong. So that down the S and P could have a be have a follow up to their all time highs as the others take a breather, unless they go together. My thinking is we've got so much rotation that's been going on for over a year and a half now that the rotation will continue, that we'll start to see some kind of a slowdown in the um, the real big caps. What happens? I think Amazon has earnings coming out in the next day or so. Amazon is trading up five and a half at 1893 uh, at this particular point in leg D in the daily, leg D in the weekly. Brand new gray, uh, leg gray, a uh, gray leg A in the, in the monthly chart. But that 2050.50 all time high back in September of last year, down to the round number 1307. How, you know, this is still one of the great companies. People ask me all the time, what can I just buy and hold? And I always say, you know, Amazon is one of those stocks. Uh, for my subscribers, I've always talked very positively about Amazon, Google. We've not owned it at, at, at the prices that at, there are others that we, you know, we have much greater interest in because of the potential. Uh, percentage gains that could be in a, maybe a shorter period, but as a long-term buy and hold, maybe for like college, um, a college plan, uh, or maybe an IRA. Every time, I, I would not be short in Google or Amazon, but I would say that on every very strong decline, if this is your inclination, these are the stocks that you like, and you agree with me. This is the the General Motors, the uh, Chrysler, the um, ABC of the 1920s. This is the same period we're in right now, but with different uh, different companies. Then these are the, the great companies. So these are the ones that you really want to own. At some point, they'll get clobbered. At some point, you're going to get some senators saying they've got to be split up and do this, do that. But up until then, I think you know this is the place to be. So we'll see how Amazon now. I got a feeling that this is just from what I'm looking at market-wise, price-wise, et cetera. That Amazon might turn out to give a little bit for the a bit of a disappointment, at least shorter term. I don't know. I'm just saying. So we'll see if that's a potential for some kind of a pullback. And then what we might see is that some of the other cyclicals maybe hold better. Hey, let's just look at um, Ford. Uh, Ford has spoke about it yesterday, pulling back a little bit, made a new uh, high on Friday. Is that correct? So yeah, it went to a leg F, and this is recycled. 
So it's trading. Oh, it's down 10 cents right now at 9.40. That's not a big deal. I just saw minus 1, and then one and it's just a minus 1%. Not a problem. So that is an F. It could recycle. I wouldn't be surprised if um, the reason why uh, Ford and General Motors have actually held quite nicely here, uh, General Motors is down sharply after a nice leg D to the upside on Friday. Yesterday was a pullback, down 5 cents pre-market at 39.45. Um, these are holding much better than you would think if you read about, uh, you know, how bad the auto industry is. I don't think it's that bad. <laughs> Maybe it is. I don't think so. Hey, let's look at Tesla because this guy is all over the place. Now, what is he saying? He said fully automated uh, by next year. Let me tell you, I don't know where this guy comes from. He's, he's one of those geniuses that has a mouth that just kind of shoots off all the time. He does produce. There's no question about it, but he also um, blabs. And, I, you know, Musk, Tesla's down 3 and a half at 3, 2.58. Is If it breaks 2.54, it's in real trouble. I do, with all the legislation and everything, you might have experimental. You'll get permission, certainly, to have some experimental um, driverless cars. I just... I don't see it being the big public thing right now. I just don't think there's... Who's going to take the responsibility, the insurance responsibility? We don't know what happens, and all you need is one thing to happen, and you're kind of out of business for weeks before something happens. This is not Boeing. This is different. This is an individual. Um, the, the roads are made up of not open skies and one jet. This is... Pedestrians, it's 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 um, other cars, it's park cars, it's all the changes that's gone on in most of the cities, big cities, where you've got bicycle paths. I don't know. This is it's a challenge. I think it'll be amazing, but I just don't think so. Um, so all right, question in the den. Uh, Amazon now nine twenty eight billion. Can you imagine market cap? Law of large numbers. How much further can it expand? Well, it could still expand. The question is, how much can the price go? So that's the big issue. But you know what? 928 billion. We have small companies in the United States that are the gross domestic product of many countries in the world. But at 928 billion market cap, Amazon is like a country unto its own. I mean, it is huge. So obviously it's going to become a prime target. <laughs> Little joke. A prime target for um, a, break, a breakdown, a breakup. And uh, at some point. When? I'm not sure. Yeah, our, our economy is uh, 17, 18 trillion. Um, hmm. uh, <laughs> it's still a big number. Let me tell you. 928 billion. It's big. I'll be right back. That's the chapter tag. Munitions are. Dow futures up 62. S&P futures up 225. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently 
currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let Gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi folks, Basil Chapman is recorded program for to be replayed at noon. So whatever I'm saying here, the future's up 57. If the Dow futures up, uh, the Dow in real life is up 57 at 130. After 130, that's going to be very good action. And uh, the E-mini is up 225. It's a little weaker. Yesterday, the Dow was a little weaker than the S&P. We've had this rotation for a little while. So we've been watching that. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Dave uh, White in the den uh, said, hog. Uh, that's Harley Davidson up a little on bad results, but not as bad as feared. Uh, it's still a lousy. Oh man, yeah, I don't. You know, this reminds me of General Motors in the 1980s. I just see no reason why Hog shouldn't have been skyrocketing towards the towards the 70s rather than stuck here in the in the 39.40 area. Uh, you know, it, 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 U.S. economy is one of the great economies of the world right now. It should be represented and um, illuminated by a company such as Harley Davidson around the world. So I, I just don't understand what's got it, what's been happening over the last couple of years. Not 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 good at all. Um, they had every opportunity to be a leader um, just around the world. People love Harley Davidsons around the world because they represent such an American icon, iconic vehicle. Um, don't understand. Personally, I've always liked the, 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 the snappier, faster Ducatis and stuff like that. Not that I've had one, but I've always liked the sound and the look. But the Harley is the, it's, it's, it's the, the, the vehicle that you can, this is a big country. You need something that can really uh, carry you comfortably all over the show. So I think that I'm, I'm disappointed in Harley, I must say. I think the founders, Harley and Davidson, would have been very disappointed. But uh, what can I say? Um, next thing I want to just mention is that, um, yeah, I got an email. I think this is absolutely correct. This, this is a, a statement that I, I have absolutely no, um, uh, I, I cannot reject it. I, I completely concur. It's, it's one big part. It says, um, not a silent bull market. I said silent. The, the, the way I said silent is that it's the least Advertise, it's the least mentioned, it's the least discussed bull market that I can ever, I can ever recall. Um, and uh, that's really, that was my point, uh, that it isn't talked about at parties or anywhere in public. Now, next so the statement is, but a very fundamental driven bull market versus technical, absolutely. No, it's also technical for different reasons. But it is a, a fundamental based on what you had to do was watch the Federal Reserve keeping interest rates high with nowhere else for fund managers to put money, but the stock market market goes higher. Absolutely. And, and that, that is the question. That's why the short trades and the shorter term trades, I believe, are, are, are pockets of weakness. The big picture at this particular stage now for me is that the Dow should, and S&P should make all-time highs and how the areas that have been spectacular like um, let's just go to the 
XLK for a moment to show you the weekly chart that one red candle, well, let's call it two red candles since the December low. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, I, I don't know, maybe 19 or 20 weeks with just two red candles. And you want to know something? Those two red candles still had higher highs. So they continued the upward move. At some point, you're going to give that back. Um, give some of it back, and that's why 74 to 73, the 9 and 14 period weekly moving average, that would be key support. But in leg B, it still should go to a C and a D. So I absolutely concur with that statement. Um, but it's not been all that easy to, to just in terms of looking at markets on a daily or weekly basis because there have been these pockets of weakness. It's just that the rotation has allowed other sectors to push higher. So that's the only thing I can say there. Um, and um, yes, so I, let me do something else here. I just wanted to say that EW, which is Edwards Life Sciences, it's pulling back here, but it has earnings today. It's one of those really very good companies. Life Sciences is in the medical uh, technology area, medical instruments, I believe, um, and experiments there. This is very important because it's a leg F, I believe. It could be an, a recount in the monthly chart. But look, weekly chart is saying it'll have to have a fabulous earnings report to go over 200. And this point, it could be uh, ready for a little digestive phase. Um, another another one is RHI, which is RHI is Robert Half International. This is a job situation. It's trading at 67.60, made an all-time all high of 79 or 80, I can't remember, 79.91 back in August of 2018, plunged to the 200 period weekly support level of 53 or 52, 52.79, and now it's trading at 67. That earnings report, I'm just mentioning the earnings reports today, that's going to be really important. If it pulls back, it's going to say, whoops, um, there's a little problem here. If it spirals high, it's up three, say 5%. After the announcement, and tomorrow it actually opens up 5%. That's going to be very good. I just think we're in for some kind of a digestive phase here. Uh, Texas Instruments, did I mention that? Yeah, Texas Instruments, uh, leg weekly is A, B, C, leg D, making a potential peak D if it doesn't go above uh, 117.85 this week. And A, B, C, D, peak D in the uh, daily. So at 115 I'm going to be watching this closely because it's going to tell us a lot about the SMHs. Are the SMHs just ready for another breakout to the upside? I, I, I'm looking at this and I'm suggesting to you that there's probably a filling of the gap. At least the high that was made on the 15th was 115.87 and then it gaps up on the 17th, 116.89. I think the, the high um, 115s. The 115 should be tested soon. That's what I'm thinking. Um, the MACD is still very good. The stochastics excellent at 92, but it is starting to pull back. So I'm watching this very closely. Weekly is still excellent. So any pullback in the SMHs could be a short-lived. And then we're going to see if it gets ready for another big move to the upside leg D. Look at that monthly chart. Just four incredible candles going from the 80, 84-ish area to the high of 118, yes, uh, a few days ago, 118.83. So Texas Instruments today, I mentioned just today because it's today, it's going to be very important. iRobot, I-R-B-T, iRobot, I haven't notated this for a little while. I used to have it all notated. I don't know what happened to the notation. Just disappeared. Yes, trading at 128.75, up two cents. Watch this closely because if it spirals into the 130 four or higher area over the next two days. That's going to be very good. Oh, robot bots. That's what I was, remember. I was looking for the other area bots, and I said it begins with a B. You couldn't remember it, bots. Let me put that down. I always forget bots. B-O-T-Z. We do not have a position. Made a peak E at 21 fifth at 22. Did it hit 22? 21.99 on the 17th. So for two days, it's pulled back a little bit. Nice move up in the weekly, but the all-time high back at 28. 2742, January of last year, it too didn't make a new. I hit the 200 period moving average of the monthly chart, rebounded. Bots is going to be important. Let me go back. Where was I? I was talking about iRobot. So that reminded me iRobot is trading at 128.75 up two cents. 
And this is going to be important because I wrote what they, it seems to be a great company. Uh, I think it's here in Massachusetts, but they, they, they go down sharply, but they always seem to make new recovery highs. We'll talk about that as soon as we get back from the last segment. Basil Chapman, pre-recorded. This is 8.50 a.m. in the morning. I'll be right back. Dow Futures up. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. I had a question about Vanguard Real Estate ETF, the VNQ. Uh, I've got this in a leg C, probably a peak C this week in the, in the weekly chart. Uh, the daily has made a peak E with a very sharp pullback from the 88s down to the 84s, now it's trading at 84.55. Um, I think it's a digestive phase, but I am watching this very closely because the IYR, which should have the same uh, pattern right now, the IRR, it's the one I follow a little more closely, um, has suggested to me that to do with rates and all, that this is a vehicle that a lot of fund managers have looked at as interest-bearing, and a very important area, SPG, it's got, you know, the, all the different variations of what would be a REIT. And uh, AMT is the, uh, what is that, the, the antenna company, uh, American uh, something. Uh, and so this is what I'm looking at here, that there should be a digestive phase, but I would not be surprised if a, a tower, thank you, American tower. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the 80, 83s is really the test. If it closes under 83, you can see left side, right side price time edge. If it breaks under 83, that's going to say timeout is going to be a little longer. All right. Now, just before we wrap up, 
because I'll be back tomorrow, and I hope you stay tuned, because if you're coming on uh, right now, it'll be Larry Pesavent, a fabulous show, of course, always with Larry. Then you've got uh, Tommy O'Brien with the uh, bull bear binary options. Then you've got uh, Think or Swim. Then you've got this show re -re recorded to be played at noon, my Tiger Technician's Hour. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter, please. And then you've got uh, Steve Rhodes and Dave White. And this afternoon, we've got uh, various people sitting in for Tom, I believe. So the IYR right now is key. Okay, let's just make this real interesting here in terms of knowing what to look at. You've got the VIX index trading at 12.38, back in the 12s. If at any point there's a slide in the market, the VIX starts to trade in the 12.80 or 13 plus area today. I suggest to you that we're in for some kind of a pullback, just shorter term pullback in the general market. So just watch it at 1.30 if the S&P futures are minus 5 rather than plus 3. That's going to suggest weakness at the close. And if the Dow is down 40 points or more instead of up 20 or more at 1.30, after 1.30, I think a week close. Hey, have a wonderful day. Stay tuned. And I will be back 